Today we're making individual chicken pot pies. They're loaded with chicken, seasoned with a little marsala and thyme, and also have a lot of vegetables and a bunch of shortcuts. I thought it'd be kind of fun to make individual chicken pot pies. You can also make individual beef pot pies, and if you would like that recipe, I use beef tenderloin, and it is on my website at cateringbydebbiecovington.com. Just click on the recipes link at the top and you'll be able to find it. Today we're doing chicken pot pie, and it's really simple. It's a lot of ingredients, but not a lot of work. I'm going to start with two cans of chicken broth. You can, if you have homemade stock, you just need four cups. And I'm going to get that sort of simmering. I like to cook my onions in the broth instead of cooking them in oil. It cuts back on calories and fat, and they're going to cook fine in the broth. So I'm going to get this going, and then I'm going to add my onion that's diced. I use sweet onion. I tend to use Vidalia onions. I prefer them. And then I'm going to add a little bit of minced garlic. So we're just going to let this cook in the broth for a minute or two. A little stir. Today I'm using a rotisserie chicken. I usually don't. I usually cook my own, but it's kind of in a hurry. So I used a rotisserie chicken, and this one I got between three and four cups of chicken once I pulled it. So if you're using chicken that you've cooked previously, three to four cups is what you need to add. But I'm going to do this at the end. To my broth mixture, I'm going to add the vegetables and let them get going. So I have some chopped fresh broccoli. And this also will cook in this warm broth. Turn it up just a touch. And then I have a bag of frozen mixed vegetables. This one has corn, peas, green beans, and carrots. Sometimes I can find it with lima beans. I couldn't this time, but I like that too. And the exact sizes and measurements of um, all of the ingredients are on my website, and you can print the recipe. So we let this get going. I like a lot of peas. In, in my pot pies, so I'm, I'm adding an extra cup of frozen peas. And then I'm adding a jar, this is six ounces drained, of mushroom stems and pieces. You can cook your own mushrooms if you want. I mean, you can do all of this fresh veggies, but this is kind of a fast dinner recipe. So I'm taking a lot of shortcuts. So I'm going to let this simmer for a couple of minutes, and then I'll come back, add the seasonings and the chicken. The broth has been simmering, and so now it's time to add the chicken. This is a combination of white and dark meat, but what you decide to use is completely up to you. This is a very versatile pot pie feeling. So now it's time to season, and it's just a few seasonings. I'm going to use a little bit of dried thyme, a little pepper, a little salt, and that's it. All right, so I want this to get warm. And while this is cooking, I'm going to make a slurry. So I have a cup of water, and to that I'm going to add some cornstarch. The cornstarch is a thickening agent, so when I mix it with the water and pour it into the broth, it's going to give the broth sort of a shiny texture or a shiny look, and it's going to give it a little thick. this and now 
I just need to let it cook until it starts to thicken. This only took a couple of minutes and as you can see the broth has gotten thicker. So I'm just going to add a couple more things before we ladle them into our bowls. I have some fresh chopped Italian parsley and then a little bit of heavy cream and some Marsala wine. Stir this for a second. I'm just going to leave it on really, really low heat while we cut the puff pastry tops for our pot pies. Since we're making individual pot pies, I'm going to use some oven proof soup bowls. But to make, to measure the tops, we need to go ahead and roll out the puff pastry. So I have two sheets and they've been sitting out just a little while to get soft enough that I can roll them. So I want them kind of thick. I'm just going to roll it out enough to kind of straighten the seam and to be able to get two rounds out of each one. So let's see. Yeah, this will work. Okay, so all I'm going to do is flip the pot pie, I mean the, flip the bowl over, and then you can take just a paring knife, go around the edges. This does not have to be perfect or beautiful or anything because you're going to stick it to the bowl and it's going to puff up. So there's one. And there's two. So I'm going to roll out this other piece and do it two more times. And then we'll put the pot pies together. Okay, so I have four very rustic puff pastry tops to go on the tops of my bowls. This is how you make the puff pastry stick. I'm just going to beat an egg and then take a little bit of the egg and brush it on the edge of the bowls. Looks a little messy, but it's kind of a glue. can wipe off anything that drips. Then I'm going to fill it with the pot pie filling. Put a little bit more. Make sure you get a lot of broth in there too. And then I can put my puff pastry on the top and press it around the edges. See, it doesn't matter how it looked because it's on there. Doesn't matter that it wasn't all pretty on the sides because this is gonna work great. And then all you do is brush the top of your pot pie to give it a kind of a golden crust. And then cut a couple little vents in the top for air to come out. In the middle. So I made the hole. So this is all you have to do. I'm going to go ahead and make my other three pot pies. My oven is preheating at 400 degrees and I'm going to pop these in. It's going to take about 30 minutes and then we'll pull them right back out. So we'll see you then. The pot pies are all puffed and hot. And as you can see, a little bit of juice did come out, so I'm glad I had a pan underneath the bottom of them. And they are too hot to eat, which is fine, because I'm going to wait and reheat these just a touch, and we'll have them for supper. But aren't they beautiful? These are so easy. I hope you'll try it and enjoy them. If you'd like to see more recipes like this, please subscribe. For complete ingredients and cooking instructions, and to purchase cookbooks, visit cateringbydebbiecovington.com.